Our final topic that we're going to talk about is Azure's Cosmos DB. Now, this is an interesting offering for people who don't come from the database world because what is it really doing? It stores what they call documents. What is document? It's really just JSON. It's really just a JavaScript unstructured bit of object data. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how Cosmos DB really works and how it scales and the types of data that it stores. Very interestingly, if you are still familiar with SQL, you can still use it. So let's check it out. Now I want to focus on some of the other database solutions that exist in the Azure ecosystem, particularly Cosmos database. Now, I had already mentioned things like the Postgres SQL already lives and exists in a couple different forms within the Azure ecosystem, as well as even the MySQL database. You see Azure database for MySQL servers. All of these things do exist, but one of the interesting things that really exists for scale is Cosmos DB. Cosmos DB looks and feels a lot like MongoDB, if you've ever used MongoDB. Instead of storing data in relational tables, what it does is it stores documents. You could almost think of a document as a row. It contains a whole lot of data, except for documents are structured really funny. They're structured like JSON, where you could have an object of data, where we have things like the name of Knox and you know, eye color of blue, make something up like that. And then within that, we could have sub objects or an array of objects. Things like hobbies could include, you know, a sub object right here that would include more details about my individual hobbies. This could be things like sport hobbies, which could be things like football or soccer. And then we could have things like tech hobbies, which could be, you know, uh, exploring new hardware offerings that are out there today or blockchain technologies, things that I am really, really into. So this is one individual document and it contains what is effectively uh, like a row of data if you were thinking about table storage, but those rows of data could also contain rows within it, which makes it an unstructured style of data. The interesting thing about it is I could query, I could have more and more and more documents being created that contain, you know, other details about other people like name of Bob and so on and so on. But the interesting thing about it is it's not forced to adhere to the exact same schema as the previous documents were. So this is why there could be a similar relationship from one document to the next. However, uh, it's not necessary because the actual schema and structure of the data can change from one document to the next. Developers really, really, really like this. Why? Because they don't have to leave their happy place of JavaScript. It's all JavaScript at the end of the day where we're storing JSON objects in a document. Beyond that, as our application changes and we want to record new data, we don't have to tear down our entire table structure and rebuild it again. Instead, we can just add the actual rows or add the actual keys in, in the JSON object whenever we want and just start storing it that way. So the interesting thing there is the fact that uh, we are schema agnostic. We can be very dynamic in the types of data that we store. Now, the big wins for Cosmos DB uh, is the fact that Cosmos DB is geographically replicated and very, very, very performant. I mean, extremely performant. For a long time, it was expensive too, but they've made it work out a lot better to where we can now define compute units for the amount of storage that we want. It says there is a Cosmos DB free tier. Well, we'll get a thousand request units and 25 gigs of storage in a free account if that's what we want to do. We can also use an auto scaling method like the serverless mode that we have right here. When I choose provisioned throughput, that means we are going to tell it exactly how much throughput we can handle whenever we are actually using this. With this Cosmos DB free tier, it tells you that 1,000 request units and 25 gigs of storage equates to be about 64 bucks a month that it's gonna end up saving you, which is pretty nice that it can apply that upfront. But when you have large applications, the idea is we may deploy an app 
in the East US and then a copy of that app in the UK and then a copy of that app in Australia. And what the problem is, is when we have one single database, perhaps in the East US, the latency for the UK and Australia to reach those applications can be a bit of a problem. Beyond that throughput from having a large amount of data stored in one single database also becomes a challenge until you find yourself in the hyperscale territory or you start leverage database sharding. Hyperscale and sharding are built into Cosmos DB by default. That is the actual architecture of Cosmos DB that happens behind the scenes. Now that's a pretty complicated topic in itself, how it does indexing and how it actually allocates uh, specific data to specific resources. And I'd encourage you to actually go check out some of our developer content on CBT Nuggets to dig deep into the actual architecture of Cosmos DB because it's a big deal. At a very high level though, I could deploy Cosmos DB and have it replicate across these different data centers. So that way replication can come, a transaction can come in in Australia and hit my Australia Cosmos DB, then get replicated to the UK and then to the East US without consuming a tremendous amount of data and throughput then querying the data works the exact same way. We can query data as it's been replicated across this entire environment. So it's a really incredible way to scale a database horizontally while also remaining schema agnostic. We can change the schema of our data after the fact without breaking anything under the hood. Now, the last thing I'll say about this is the different ways that we can actually access the underlying data and query the underlying data. We see that we can actually use the SQL programming language to query the data, which is a really cool thing. But we can also leverage or refactor some of our existing applications to work with Cosmos DB. For instance, if I had written an application to work with Azure Table Storage, we can very quickly repurpose that to work with Cosmos DB by creating the resource right here. It tells you fully managed database service for apps written for table storage. Same thing goes with Gremlin or MongoDB. We have the ability to basically very quickly refactor our applications to work with Cosmos DB. So this is understanding how for a unstructured data source like Cosmos DB, which could be relational, maybe or maybe not, depending on the data stored, can be scaled very quickly and remain schema agnostic. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.